Hi, and thank you for joining me today. My name is Courtney Anderson. I'm the Research Manager of Applications here at ACD, a biotechnic brand. Today, I'm going to discuss incorporating spatial mapping and confirmation of gene signatures into a single cell RNA sequencing workflow using a multiplex in situ hybridization technology known as RNA scope. For many tissues, such as the brain, tumor, and developing embryos, are complex, highly heterogeneous tissues, and they're comprised of multiple cell types and states. And while these tissues have been analyzed at the DNA and protein levels, really analyzing at the transcriptomic or RNA level can really help to enable identification of new cell types, predictive biomarkers, new therapeutic strategies, and beyond. However, interrogation of these complex heterogeneous tissues at the transcriptomic level really requires a highly sensitive, specific, and multiplex spatial approach with single cell resolution. And to kind of just give an overview of the landscape of current transcriptomic techniques, I liken this analogy to uh, fruit, <laughs> uh, first starting off with uh, bulk analyses. Uh, so traditional bulk transcriptomic analyses, such as PCR or northern blotting, are really great for getting an average gene expression, and they're good for homogeneous tissue types. However, when you have highly heterogeneous tissues, you lose that spatial and single cell information that can be really critical uh, to understanding the tissue. So much like this fruit smoothie, uh, the tissue gets ground up and you don't really know exactly what is going into the tissue or exactly what is going into the fruit smoothie. However, with the advent of single cell transcriptomic technologies, such as single cell RNA sequencing, now you can find out the composition of this fruit smoothie or your tissue. You can find out what fruits are going into the smoothie or find out what cell types are actually making up your tissue of interest. While this technique has been quite powerful, uh, you retain that single cell information, but you still don't have the spatial organization. These cells or fruits can be laid out in a 3D organizational structure. And so that's really important to know what is that relationship between all these cells spatially. And so really to complete the picture, to get the whole fruit pie or to get the entire tissue analysis uh, really requires a single cell multiplexing spatial analysis approach. Um, one that can still provide transcriptomic information with spatial organization, but also still retaining the single cell resolution. One technique that is uh, able to do this is a technique called RNA scope in situ hybridization. And many researchers have incorporating spatial analyses now into their single cell RNA sequencing workflows. And that's because when you have or performing these single cell RNA sequencing assays, you're taking bulk tissue, you're dissociating it into individual single cells, and then you're characterizing uh, these cell types and clustering them and identifying potentially new cell types uh, that are characterized by various gene signatures. However, those gene signatures still need to be confirmed at the single cell level and they also have a spatial organization to them. Uh, they're laid out in the tissue in a certain organization. And with the RNA scope assay, you can now get both of these. You can get single cell confirmation and you can get spatial mapping. So many researchers have used this in order to spatially map a cell atlas, visualize gene signatures of newly identified cell subtypes, <clears throat> classify highly heterogeneous cell types, even confirm new therapeutic cell types. Uh, or you can characterize the immune landscape, identify new immunotherapy targets, analyze or predict response to drug treatments, and also confirm publicly available data sets such as the TCGA and tabula mirrors. What we wanted to do is to show the incorporation of spatial mapping into the single cell RNA sequencing workflow by adding on that confirmation and spatial mapping to an existing RNA sequencing project. So we decided to focus on this one publication called Single um, Cellular Taxonomy of the Mouse Striatum as Revealed by Single Cell RNA-Seq. It's a publication that came out of Stephen Quake's lab back in 2016. They analyzed the transcriptomes of over 1,200 single striatal cells from the mouse striatum. Um, and they did this either through microfluidic capture or fax capture, and then performed the single cell RNA sequencing analysis. <clears throat> and in this paper, they were able to describe previously unknown medium spiny neuronal subtypes and also identify discrete cell types that exist in a continuous spectrum of a transcriptional state. And as they described it, they found functional diversity within a complex tissue arises from a small number of discrete cell types. However, while they were able to very nicely characterize the D1 and D2 neuronal subtypes in the striatum, they did not show any confirmation or spatial mapping of these cell types. And so we wanted to add that to this story. 
But to do that, we took advantage of the RNA scope and Site2 hybridization technology. This is a single molecule RNA-ish technology that's very highly specific and sensitive. And so I'll just briefly go over how the technology works. Uh, the probes are depicted as double Zs. They're DNA oligonucleotide-based probes. They bind to the target sequence or the target RNA. Upon binding, a preamplifier will bind to the top of the double Zs, and to each, each preamplifier, multiple amplifiers will bind. Lastly, to each amplifier, multiple labeled probes will bind, and these labeled probes will have a chromogenic enzyme or a fluorophore, uh, depending on the assay being used. And a typical RNA scope probe will have about 20 of these double Z uh, trees, uh, as we like to call them, uh, along the RNA transcript. And so you can imagine if you have 20 of these trees uh, lighting up along the transcript, it's how we can now localize a tremendous amount of signal to an individual RNA molecule. So this is where we get the high sensitivity and how we are able to uh, detect single molecule RNAs uh, detection in the tissue context. Now to ensure specificity, the way the probe design works is that if only one Z binds to the target RNA sequence, the preamplifier cannot form a stable hybridization and you get no building of that amplification tree. Uh, so really you need both Zs to bind in tandem in order for the tree to be built. Uh, so the combination of these two between the probe design and the signal amplification is how the RNA scope technology can get a very high sensitivity, uh, low specificity. So that yields a very high signal to noise ratio. Now, coming back to the publication uh, that we were interested in, the paper did a very nice job identifying uh, both major and minor subpopulations uh, based on either DRD1 or DRD2 marker. Uh, this is widely known in the field that striatal neurons can express either DRD1 or DRD2, which are dopaminergic receptors. Uh, but then the researchers in this paper had further characterized these uh, cell populations. So shown here, the D1 major population was marked by expression of FOXP1, and the D1 minor population was marked by expression of PCDH8. And shown in the middle of the screen is the single cell sequencing data. We were able to confirm that indeed there were cells co-expressing both of these markers, and they seem to be in more abundance for the FOXP1 major population compared to the PCDH8 minor population. Now, the authors further refined these populations. They found that the D1 major uh, population had a subpopulation that was marked by DNER and MIS2. And again, the single cell uh, data is shown on the right-hand side. Now, while most of these cells expressed either MIS2 or DNER, uh, there were some cells that co-expressed both of these markers. And that's what we can show here using the RNA scope uh, multiplex V2 assay for four targets, where we could combine DRD1, FOXP1, MIS2, and DNER and find um, expression of a wide range of these uh, combinations. Furthermore, on the other side of the axis were the D2 uh, major and minor populations. D2 major was marked by SINPER, and the D2 minor population was marked by expression of HTR7. Again, the single cell data is shown in the middle of the screen. And again, we could also confirm that we found more exp uh, expression or more cells expressing the major marker SINPER. Uh, and then while we could detect some HTR7, DRD2 co-expressing cells, they definitely were fewer in number. Uh, matching the single cell RNA sequencing data. Now, furthermore, again, just like the D1 population, the D2 also major population also had a subpopulation. These cells were marked by expression of either COB1 or CART-PT. And again, while some cells expressed either or of these markers, there were a few that expressed both of these markers. And that can be depicted here on the bottom of the screen, where again, we see very nice co-localization of either the three or all four markers together in the same cell. Now, what was really interesting to us and a little bit confounding on the experiments is that in order to really characterize all of the D1 and D2 MSNs, uh, these, these cell types were really marked by eight genes each. The D1 cell types were marked by the uh, genes shown here on the screen in red, and the D2 MSNs were marked by the genes shown in green on the screen. So if we really wanted to be able to detect all D1 or all D2 MSNs, we really needed an assay that could target at least eight genes in the same tissue section. And so for that, we then took advantage of the RNA scope Hyplex 8 reagent kit. And furthermore, if we could combine um, multiple markers from each subtype, if we could look at 12 markers at the same time, we would be able to capture all of the D1 and two, D2 MSNs 
in the same section. And so for that, we took advantage of the ArniScope Hyplex 12 reagent kit. So just to briefly review uh, what the, how the ArniScope Hyplex assay works, uh, this is a very uh, powerful assay that is based on the ArniScope technology, but now provides signal amplification for up to 12 RNA targets on the same tissue sections. Now, this is an iterative fluorescent detection in groups of four targets at a time. So what happens is you bind or you hybridize all 12 of your probes at the same time, you perform signal amplification for all 12 of the probes, uh, but then you would do the fluor four labeled probe hybridization for the first four, so T1 through T4, uh, the first four probes. You would then take an image of uh, that, those four fluor fours, you would then cleave off those four fluor fours, and then you would rehybridize for the next uh, four uh, probes, so T5 through T8 with the fluor four labeling. Again, you would re-image that, and then if you were going on to 12 targets, you would cleave off the fluorophores from T5 through T8 and hybridize again with your T9 through T12 fluorophore labeling. And again, take another image. Uh, now, the fluorophore cleaving procedure is a very rapid uh, procedure with minimal to no effect on the RNA or tissue morphology, which is very important. This is not a stripping procedure. It just cleaves off the fluorophore. So the uh, RNA and tissue morphology is still remaining intact. Uh, furthermore, uh, to, after you've taken all three of those images, you then use the image registration software that is provided with the, the RNAscope Hyplex kit. This stitches all the images together based on the DAPI nuclei stain, um, and it's really a very precise image registration algorithm that enables true 12plex data visualization at the single cell level. This assay is compatible with both fresh frozen and fixed frozen sample types. And really what's ideal about this is not only can you save precious samples by running more targets on fewer sections, but for tissues such as the brain, where you can very quickly change from one region of the brain to another region of the brain or change from structure to structure, uh, this really enables you now to ensure you're detecting the right plane of section um, in the brain. We took advantage of this 8-plex assay to first detect all of the D1 MSN subtypes uh, with all the markers shown here in the screen, and we could very precisely characterize those two major D1 populations that we had mentioned previously. Furthermore, looking at the D2 population, again, with the Hyplex 8 assay, we could detect all the D2 MSN subtypes with these eight probes in the same section. Now, using the 12-plex assay, we could look at 12 targets simultaneously in the mouse striatum in order to characterize and fully visualize all the D1 and D2 populations. And what we're showing here is just a, a video highlighting all of those genes coming up one at a time. So you can see how we layer on and how some genes express, some cells express far more than just one or two of these genes. They can express almost um, eight or 12 or various combinations of the genes. Uh, so it's a very powerful assay and again getting that single cell resolution with this assay. This is just a still shot now of that same video that we were just showing. Uh, now you can really appreciate the complexity how there are cells here that express multiple uh, genes and to really uh, be able to characterize them it can be quite difficult just to do by the eye. Uh, so registration software really allows for flexible target visualization of these genes. Uh, shown here is just a screenshot of what the image registration software looks like. What's really very nice is that you can toggle on and off the different genes or different colors so you can more easily visualize the cells and their gene expression and identify which ones are positive or negative for your gene of interest. We took advantage of that by taking that exact same 12-plex section I just showed and only focused on DRD1 and DRD2. And we were able to confirm a very interesting finding from the single cell paper, which demonstrated that while most cells express either D1 or D2, <clears throat> there are a few rare cells that actually co-express both of these markers. And we were able to detect that in the tissue context with this assay and using the image registration software. So in summary, uh, we discussed in situ confirmation and spatial mapping of single cell RNA sequencing results at single cell resolution, uh, and now incorporating this type of spatial mapping into the single cell RNA sequencing workflow. Using the Hyplex assay, we can now have higher multiplexing capabilities of up to 12 targets in the tissue context, and I didn't have time to show it in this presentation, but this can also be combined with immunohistochemistry, immunofluorescence for simultaneous detection of RNA and protein with 12 RNA targets 
and one IHC or IF target. Furthermore, you can reduce the sample slides with multiple probe combinations now combined into one. So rather than doing three slides of four probes, you can now just do one slide with all 12 probes, which is very important if you have precious samples or a sample type such as the brain where you quickly change structures as you cut through the tissue. And lastly, the image registration software allows for flexible visualization of gene expression data with single cell resolution and for 12 targets. And with that, I would like to acknowledge the many scientists who worked on this project, including a very talented associate scientist, Jody Patak, who led this project, in addition to the many R&D scientists who worked on developing the Hyplex assay. And with that, I can take any questions or feel free to contact me at the email address shown here on the screen. Thank you for your time.